I'm here. Hello. All right, hear me out. This is Tech Tuesday, but because I'm starting after midnight, I can wear my Exploit Wednesday shirt. So, um, frankly, it just feels like a win all around. All right, so a recap from what we managed to do last time. We got enough working in the 6502, just in terms of uh, opcodes that, that we've defined uh, for a a real, real trivial um, program to be run. So, just real simple multiplication, which the CPU itself uh, lacked. And the bad news is that uh, that means that, honestly, at this point, we don't have much left to do but plumbing before we can start moving on towards actually emulating a proper system. Um, so I hope you're all in the mood for a real chill stream, because uh, it's it's time for um, it's it's time for just getting some plumbing written. So. How do we want to want to organize this? Um, I am just looking off of the opcode list on 6502.org. Oh, link in chat. Um, and I'm honestly kind of tempted to just group everything together the way that it's grouped in this list, have all the ADCs linked together, or grouped together, have all the ands grouped together, and so on. I rule? No, 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 no. Everybody in chat rules. I'm just here to provide content. Let's just go ahead and get started. Um, it's going to be a lot of different addressing modes that we're going to have to write. Um, this might not be the last 6502 implementation stream as a result, because, you know, it's only going to go for two or three hours. But we'll get as much as we can done. Conveniently, we do have add with carry right where my cursor was. Not on purpose, but hey, why not? So we can find the clock cycle. We'll leave. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with the lists order. I I think that it's good. All right. So this is. ADC, this is zero page. Nine. 
accessible to across the page boundary, which is nice. All right, well, that's easy enough. Um, One of the places that my mind is at right now is as I'm going through, there's going to be a ton of boilerplate here um, that I wouldn't mind necessarily getting rid of. And thinking about how I can generalize a lot of this logic uh, is good. with the few different addressing modes available, wouldn't making some methods to handle them be a wise idea? Yeah, I'm probably going to end up doing that this stream, which is one of the reasons that... Um, it's one of the reasons that it's likely to be the case that that this is not going to be the last implementation stream. Um, right now, I'm, I'm largely thinking about the best way to accomplish that. One of those things, one thing that, that I might consider doing. Also, I recognize that the implementation of add with carry and subtract with borrow um, make this not a MOS 6502, but a RICO, whatever the hell the RICO chip name was. Let's try this. And this this is kind of trivial and doesn't entirely um, do what we want. But when we get to things like zero page, or hell, not even zero page, but like indirect offset by X and so on, um, this is going to start making a lot more uh, sense. But this is enough, uh, our simplest case. This is enough for us to test it out. Something. 
This is why you shouldn't take a week's break between each time that you touch a bit of code. All right, I need to give it a buzz. That makes sense. be able to just call CPU register is at zero. We actually don't have any RAM presently, but this should work. We should see, we should see PC increment by two, and we should see the accumulator register not do anything. Nope, super broken. Breaking. 65. For a moment. All right, so immediate it's giving us back nil. No. Read advanced PC is actually where that mill is coming from, which is concerning. So we hit X. Yep, we're getting a nil back from read advanced PC. A little bit more confidence about where I exist. So I, I exist within the instance. Interesting. Yo, Lom Decoder, how's it going? Been a while. Okay, so the program counter is actually incrementing. We're getting nothing back. Hey, remember when I said that we don't have any RAM attached and that probably doesn't matter? I have a feeling that that actually matters.
mutant little is this a code stream yes i mean nominally so uh let's be real uh if you're watching this i'm probably not coding very well uh long decoder previously and i i might have uh fixed this technically a bug i didn't remember having done so I thought that I just returned a zero if we had a... No! Nope, I did actually end up fixing that bug, so uh, we are returning nil if uh, if we read out of range. Okay, well that makes more sense. Hey everyone, hey, I did the thing that I should have done, and it turns out that was the problem. So, just, you know... Take it from me. Never do the right thing. Uh, need to give it a name. Broken color meat. Color is broken because of weird read line bugs. Okay, yeah. Uh read line has extra broken. I love it. Alright, now when we call Oh wow, it it's acting like I've called a really weird winch or something. Neat. Oh dear. Okay, things things were extra broken there. Let's start fresh. is yep Let's see our remaining cycles go down if I call 105 the PC should increment again Accumulator didn't change, but let's see. So we are at two. Go back and actually put in that debug code. It's 
I had missed the comma in the attach. I see. Start at zero. I have a zero page. Interesting. Am I getting the read and write calls reversed, maybe? I'm not calling set read or set write. Probably a good thing to do. Let's call let's let's do those right calls again. There we go. First five bytes should be one, two, three, oh, four. Let's see. Go F one, we have a two. Alright. That's much better. We are seeing that debug uh, printed out. So that's good. Our A register is exactly what we expect. It's a one. We call it again. We've added this one now. A is four. Interesting. Now we're seven. I'm mildly confused. Red is zero. It became an eight. Red a four became a fourteen. Reading zeros and not doing anything. I'm mildly confused. And it's probably my fault. our carry flag is our flag was hitting one sometimes that's a zero flag zero flag it's weird too
cursing first. Uh, we definitely need to do that uh, for both of our ads. That's actually the bug that I should have caught last time. Whoops. Zero. Wait, one is carry? One is carry. All right, so yeah, it's a carry problem. We're definitely having a carry problem. Weird. Why? Right, so we're getting register A, operand, flag C. Bonus for an FD buddy. Let's go. From the get-go here, f is zero. Now, if I call CPU uh, op 105, we should have a result of zero. We should not carry. Okay, it's good so far. Flag is two, which I believe is the zero flag. Yep, zero. Good. If we call it again, totally the same. Now we call up 105 again. We've got a 1 that's going to be read at address um, 2. Sure about that? Okay, very slightly confused there. reading first. Is that what I'm failing to remember? Reading first. read and then we advance the PC so that's correct Let me 
set um, read and write wrong. Set read. Oh no. Right. Did I implement this? I didn't. Called right. Yeah, I, maybe I did that. All right. Let's write. Uh, let's write a ten to address seven. Okay. Let's dump that. There's our problem. Yeah, I'm just an idiot who doesn't know how to read or write. Fair enough. Never hit the carry bit so far. Eight. Set you to one. There we go. So adding one is triggering the carry bit. That's what we needed to know. Uh, Binder News, did I hear that there are plans to release Ruby 3 this year? Yep, sure did. Uh, Lom, yeah, I, I totally could just write out a function to initialize the bus CPU RAM. Um, I'm lazy. I will probably soon. First, you know, there we go, just like that.
Yeah? Oh, yeah. What's my opinion on that, or more probably my opinion on Ruby 3? I'm excited about it. Um, there's a fair bit of change coming down the pipe, but that's generally speaking a good thing. When we went from 1.6 to 1.8, which is the first major like ABI breaking change that I encountered, um, things got better. And then when we went from 1.8 to 1.9, changes were huge and things got better. And then we went from 1.9 to 2.0, and we've been kind of iteratively improving on the language without major breaking changes. Things have been good. Yeah, optional type hints I'm excited about on the one hand. On the other hand, I kind of wish they could be made non-optional. Um, but that's me. No, uh, so here's the thing, um, Kate. Python, so for one, I don't do Python as a primary language. I've worked in Python before. I've worked alongside people who are extremely talented at Python. Um, my view on the Python 3 thing is this. Making a hard break where there wasn't Making it so that uh, people felt like they could keep on maintaining software in Python 2 seems to have played out such that Python 2 has stuck around much longer than it should have. Um, hard breaks suck. They really suck. But they are at times necessary. Um, Right now, a lot of people are talking about ARM CPUs being, like, broadly a little bit, you know, they, they have advantages over Intel CPUs, it, it, x86, 64 CPUs. A lot of that is because of avoiding falling into the trap of wanting to keep all of your legacy accounted for so that you don't lose business. Oh, absolutely, Lana. I'm not saying that ARM is, is strictly better in all senses. We've got a lot going for us in x sixty in x86-64 land. Um, but there are trade-offs there, and one of those trade-offs... Here, I'll, I'll, I'll make a real hot take. I thought that Itanium was really exciting, and I was bummed when it, when it got axed. Titanium was a lot of the benefits of Intel's CISC architecture without keeping the cruft of the... I mean, we have a... There's... The fact that we have support for 8086 instructions and we can run our, you know, my Threadripper can run this 8086 code. Man, that fucking sucks. We don't need that. Somebody spent silicon on that. That sucks. What's I gonna do? Right, I'm setting the carry flag for some fucking reason and I have no idea why. Let's figure that out. Right, one to our first address. The CPU PC is at zero. I'm gonna call op 105. I'm gonna call op 105 on the CPU. So, zero, one, zero, one. That's what I expect. But the carry flag. 
is being set. We're going to set flag C here. Result and next one up 100. Right shifted eight. Okay. This is an associativity problem. I, I can pretty, pretty much guarantee it at this point. I feel very lucky that this didn't come into play um, at all during the previous. Any odd number, that should have happened. Weird. We got ridiculously lucky, or I'm just an idiot. Like, either of those are possible. Well, no, the latter is guaranteed. But... Now I'm terrified to go look back on the um, on the last stream and, and there's almost certainly me just completely ignoring shit not being right. Right. There we go. We didn't set the carry flag. Perfect. That said, all of this is going to be identical for all of the different, um, for everything. Let's... Let's do this. Not sure. So out Outside of this, we actually don't have I think it's just a fine private method. Let's I want access to um, set these back to things like register A. Um, we're going to end up defining our helper functions on the CPU itself, which is fine. I would like to be able to do it in a private context, but I'm actually not sure how to do that off the top of my head be something to look up in the future. For now, I don't have to worry about it. There we go. We have moved all of our boiler code state setting into Let's call it set ADC registers. Uh, 
Helps if you name it consistently everywhere. Is this the smoke of programming? I mean, maybe. Operand. Operand is also something that is needed in here. Yes. It's fair. So now we can start thinking about ways to just get rid of a bunch of uh, repeated boilerplate that we're not going to want to have that's sitting around. All right, and likewise, there we go. We now have zero page. Once again, that one's pretty simple, but we're not going to have to rewrite the the same bit of um, bit of boilerplate code, code there. So that's good. Um, this one we can also test out real quick. in. I feel like I'm this. Yep. Two. Load such one. is what we expect. All right, so we aren't breaking. That's good. What's next? Zero page with F X offset. Zero page with X offset, I believe, is still constrained to the zero page. So if X was FF and we said offset FF from X. Um, that we would just wrap around. What was the screen that you were just looking at with all the uh, zeros? Uh, so this is just a quick and dirty um, uh, memory inspector that I wrote for uh, making sure that things were working as expected. So nothing super um, intense here. 
we just pull hex 100, so 256 uh, bytes from uh, from our zero page onward. And from hex 8000, we're pulling 128 bytes. And then we're just we're showing all of our uh, registers, PC, A, X. I lied, not all of our registers. Why get snow love here? Um, then all of our flags, and then the uh, the top and bottom uh, memory dumps that I took. And then I just hold down enter, and it'll walk through cycles. It's quite nice because it means that we get to. walk through step by step let's catch up I mean, binder news, I, I love the fact that ARM opcodes are all four bytes. It means that you get to know ahead of time if, like, just looking at some disassembly, like, you can say, here is exactly where alignment got fucked up. You wonder how many CS students are here taking notes? Probably not many. Um, but... I suspect CS students who are here probably feel a lot better about themselves after watching me flail at this. Right. I need to now look up in some view there. Another window. Uh, I go to So now I'm looking at a scan of actually the um, Rockwell six R sixty five C zero zero family proce of processors. Um, thankfully, all of the uh, instructions listed here are backwards compatible to the 6502. I'll link that PDF in chat. Okay, I can find your page relative addressing. Mode tests zero uh, page location specified. Set reset. Yes. Zero page indexed. Zero page register uh, with the index register and it's referred to as zero page x, zero page y. The effective address is calculated by adding the second byte of the contents uh, to the contents of the index register. Okay. No carry is added. All right, that's what I needed to know. So we are really just wrapping around, which is great. All right, so we can go ahead and write that now. 75, still length. Um, the way that we show this is ADC 
dollar sign hex comma hex. So we are plus Mr. X five. So pretty straightforward. I really should um, move away from 270 preview one uh, to something with a non broken. Um, non broken read line uh, implementation. Yeah, Lon Decoder, writing a disassembler for x86 is a tall task. Well done. Grinlith, absolutely. I started this stream late today so that on Tech Tuesday I can wear my hack.triplex exploit Wednesday shirt. Yeah, no, this this isn't Grin's uh, stuff. Yeah, it's it's Weld Pond who's responsible for these. They're all very good. And I hope that you're doing fantastic today. You wanna I worked two years on this AAA game and all I got all I got was this lousy shirt shirt. No, because if that were true, like if you got that shirt, then you would have actually been compensated at all for your labor. And we can't have that in AAA gaming because then people won't be working with passion. They'll just be in it for the money. And then our games will be lifeless, soulless. We can't have that. I mean, some egrets. I've I've got a bunch of just black <laughs> t-shirts as well. It's an easy look. What if you're in it for both passion and money? Well, sounds like you need to build a fucking time machine and go ahead and move to the 1700s, back when passion might have paid off. I mean, you might have gotten the plague too, so, you know, weigh your options there. we doing? We were going to test X offset. Cool. Alright, so currently we're going to be pointing to a zero. So if I'm writing on the third byte, I need to set X to two. Right. 
for you? 75. 117. Route 1 to that location. There's one. Ruby. Real easy. Alright. Absolute. This one's going to be pretty straightforward as well. And this is where I fuck it up. I am 1 million percent going to fuck it up here. Um, I'm pretty sure that the most significant fight of the address is going to be the first that I read. How's it going, Mellows? Oh, did I did I miss I misspelled absolute, I guess. Yeah, I, I know. I, I got the I got the vodka joke. I was agreeing with you. Thought it was very funny and clever. I know, Lambda Coder. Indianness is, is one of those things where I can I can 100 percent understand how it arose. But man, I hate it. just spent a bunch of time troubleshooting a weather station because whoever wrote the interface library used int for data types on the line in C. But no, no, no. Not everything is undefined behavior in C. There are definitely some defined behaviors in C. Um, so you don't need to worry about that. Defined behaviors do exist in C. But who oh boy. Um... Plenty of things are, for sure, undefined behaviors. See, Lambda Coder knows where it's at. That's true. Undefined behavior is just a way for the compiler to make your buggy code faster. That's true. That's that's a fact. You can take that to the bank. Why by 6D?
right. So now I need to write. Ten to one or to zero. Two. One. to remind everybody that I'm terrible at computers and that I don't count in hex natively. All right, got it in one. Register went up by two. Perfect. Added one to our register. Perfect. Don't worry, everyone. We're we're saving the hardest for last, so it will get fun later. All right. Here's our first um, our first instruction where we can cross a page boundary. And we have to add a cycle if we cross a page boundary. So that's good. That's right, the knobs are always aligned. It's a beautiful thing about knobs. All right. How are we going to do this? Oh, hey, also, immediate uh, is not three cycles, it's two cycles. Zero page is three, zero page X is four. Absolute, four. Quick search for absolute X. Interesting. All right, there are a few instructions with absolute X offset and so on that don't incur an extra cycle if you cross a page boundary. But I'm pretty sure that this is just something that we're going to want to do. Looks like Yellow Mountain Imports is doing a sale this week. Nice. Um, I have ordered both books and equipment from them before. My, the boards that I have ordered from YMI in the past have um, cracked in under a year. I take the same care of them that I that I took of my uh, karaoke boards, and my karaoke boards um, just held up better. There's a huge price disparity between those, so, so um, just something to be aware of. 
if the board cracks on the bottom, it's kind of a bummer. If the board cracks on the top, it's really tough to, to deal with. It is. It is way cheaper. Like, you can get a, a two-inch thick board from them for, like, 150 bucks. But I had my two-inch thick board from them split on the top, which wasn't great. I found out that a knot in arm can, uh, can be conditional. Um, my expectation with a conditional knot would be that that conditional knot exists specifically to allow pipelining to happen efficiently. That's my best guess. All right, absolute X offset. I should probably define that. Back to manual. Yep. All right. Absolute index addressing, X or Y offset. Addressing is used in conjunction with Y. Yep. The effective address is formed by adding the contents of X or Y to the address in the second and third bytes of the instruction. Same as well. Yep, index or count. All right. So, no weird. Um, That way, uh, turn type of data, then I'll just put extra. If we are equal, we haven't crossed a page boundary. So we don't need an extra um, cycle. Otherwise, we have crossed a page boundary. There we go. Again, we should name this correctly. I think that I already have everything defined down here. Absolute X offset. Chaos, how's it going? At this point, you leave selecting the proper instructions to the compiler people? Yeah, that's reasonable.
What are you even doing nowadays, Lambda? Like last time that we were talking about what you did, you were working in closure. I think. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, egrets. There's a few. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna say legacy, but with a capital L in this case. Um, computer architectures that uh, building accurate and performant emulators for them is like kind of becoming mission critical. And yeah, uh, the PDP-10 is among them. We're working in Clojure a few years ago, some neat startup that got acquired and you left shortly after. Yep, I know, I know how that, um, I know how that one goes. Now you work for AAA games. 50. I, I really hope that that's going well for you. Unfortunately, you're presently, um, concerned about having enough t-shirts, so I can only assume that, uh, things are not going quite as smoothly as you would want to. So now we're doing absolute X offset. So what I'm going to do here is I'll start right. Go. And then Register A is 1. We haven't carried anything. PC is incremented by 2. Nice. All right, Y offset is 7, 9. Also four plus. I'm realizing now that we can move everything into set ADC registers. That last bit of logic didn't need to exist here. At that point, like, we kind of just, uh, we renamed this to perform ADC, which is fine. down and clean up as we go back. Right. Kind of like setting cycles uniformly after we set our addressing mode. Seems better even if it doesn't matter in many cases. Huh? This is starting to feel pretty nice, relatively clean.
Alright, uh, absolute x, we will now do an absolute y. And given the, the Hamming distance between these two, I'm not even going to bother uh, testing this. That's right. Never test your code, kids. Groceries delivered. Nice. Yeah, not working from home, especially kind of right now, feels like a, a deal breaker to me. You'd love to see somebody make a proper 68OXO cycle accurate emulator. I mean, cycle accurate isn't really that hard. Like, right here, we're technically defining a cycle accurate emulator for the, the 6502. Um, there's a lot that kind of ends up being left to be desired at Cycle Accurate. Cycle Accurate is good enough in many cases. But just as a, a reminder, like the way that CPUs work, you bring a lot of pins high or low. And then after that, like a giant Rube Goldberg machine inside the silicon starts going off. And eventually that causes some other pins, often the same pins that you brought high or low, but on the read cycle, um, it, it causes pins to go high or low based off of silicon magic. One of the things that I'm planning on doing, um, because I've never done it and now I'm avoiding really doing it, uh, is uh, a, a game that's been on my radar forever, uh, which is just free online. I think it even runs in the browser called NAND Game, where you start and I mean, like everybody, like CS101, you'll play around with the NAND instruction and the idea of creating other binary operations, other bitwise operations out of NAND. Um, but this, this has you to my understanding, start at NAND gates, create like it, all the other gates, I'm assuming, like XOR, OR, AND, etc. But my understanding is that the last level of it is you you design a CPU, which is rad as hell. And now that I, I know that it, you know, exists, I don't want to do it until I can just stream it. You did NAND game after I mentioned it on stream a few weeks ago, and it's a ton of fun. Nice. I'm glad to hear that you had a good time. You got up to the full CPU and to the one pass out. Okay, so it's not even just up to a CPU. But yeah, sooner or later here, I'm going to do the NAND game on stream. It's one of my Tech Tuesdays. I figure that'll be a fun way to, to spend some time hanging out with people. All right, next up, indirect. The way that we're supposed to show this is... Interesting. It's only two length. All right. How does indirect? Is it just always compared to the C the the zero page? Indexed indirect addressing. Second type of instruction is added to the contents of the extra Discarding the carry. Well, this addition points to a memory location in zero page. Okay, in page zero, whose contents are the low order. Eight bits of the effective uh, memory address. The next memory location will be the high order bits. Okay. Oh, 
oh, hey, if I had read the fucking manual for absolute addressing, the second byte of the instruction specifies the eight low order bits of the effective address. The third byte specifies the eight high order bits. Hey, guess who's going to go ahead and fix a bug right now? Zero page plus X. We're constrained to the zero page. significant and then most significant uh, here. incur an extra um, cycle that I know of. This might change, but I don't see extra cycles being incurred so far for indirect X on the list. should be ready to test um, if I've already defined it. I have it. Six cycles. I already did. Uh, there we go. Direct X. Six cycles. Perform our ADC. Alright. 
X1002. I will write a one. At zero page. Uh, let's write it at F0. Write O2. F1, I'll write 10. And at zero, I am going to write uh, E, just EF, yeah, why not? Fair. Six one was it? Ninety seven. Let's call op code A. Ooh. Although X ends up being oh yeah, I set X. I set X myself. I typed those directly in. I do believe. Hey, I can't. Um, I can't alt tab while I'm inside the VM. It turns out, who knew? Now, indirect Y is different. Okay, so in indirect Y, we just look at the address pointed to in page zero by the byte we read. Y is added to that address to look things up. So that one's gonna be worth testing. Y is Here we again need to make a address base and an address effective. cycle. So perfectly fine there. I actually need to find the correct sure didn't. The field. Seven one, yep.
once again, I'll write one, two. 2002 and I will write 80 or I'll write at 80 write 1000 or at 81 at zero you need to write all right so the way that this uh, opcode is going to work is Wherever PC is, we're going to read one byte, and that is going to be the address inside the zero page that we're going to look, or the address that we need to look at. We will then offset it by Y to get our actual value. So, at, paid, uh, at hex 80, I have 0010 written. I'm going to set my register Y to 2. I'm going to capitalize Y the way that you're supposed to. So we are going to read 80 from byte 0, which is what PC currently points to. We are then going to look at 80 inside the 0 page. We're going to see 0, 0, 10, which is our least and most significant bytes uh, in that order, which is going to point us to 1000, hex 1000 in memory. We are then going to add y, which is 2, to our memory. And we should add the 1 that we wrote to that uh, memory location to register A. And then I will be very, very happy. Delightful. All right, so what we've done so far this stream, and I'm not done streaming yet, we have written out the code for all of our addressing modes. This is all the different ways that we can address the CPU, I think. Pretty sure. Uh, there's also an implied addressing mode, which I'm not going to write a method for. We've done that. We've implemented all of our ADC instructions. And now we should be pretty well set up to start knocking out a lot of instructions relatively quickly. Indirect Y is like the most confusing address mode that 6502 has. Yeah, I mean, it took me a moment to run through that machinery in my head for sure. You hate to be the one to point this out, but isn't this like the perfect scenario for unit testing? Yeah, absolutely it is. Sort of. Um, there's a lot of setup and teardown that I don't love about that. Um, honestly, there's probably out there just a ROM that somebody's written to do, um, to do testing for, specifically for emulators. I'm willing to bet that there's a 6502 test ROM somewhere. Yep, I'm doing it manually right now, which is currently just fine. Because again, the point of these streams is not necessarily to do it the fastest or even necessarily the best it's to be like pretty approachable and low level and unit testing super important unit testing not necessarily what this stream is is going for if i were writing this offline and i wanted it to be robust and perfect 
Yeah, I would extremely be writing unit tests for it. But as it stands, that's that's not necessarily the most engaging con uh, content. Besides, I'd rather fall on my face a few times. I think that, like, I think it's important for people to see, especially people who are getting into a topic. That's why I come into these super unprepared. Like, I I decided to jump into this doing no research, just starting from go, because I figure. It's very easy for somebody who wants to get into something to feel like all the problems are already solved and there's not a lot of reason for me to try to do something. And even small setbacks can feel like huge mountains. So doing something where I'm not, you know, just blazing through everything and and where I'm more thinking through my mindset and showing everything working each step of the way. I think that is more likely to be the type of content that I would have wanted to see when I was very first like getting into programming because early on, like early 90s when I started writing code, I mean, I had a bunch of books that, you know, were very clearly written by people who are immensely competent. But I didn't know what it looked like to not do well. And that makes it really hard to keep on, like you have to be real stubborn in a way that people shouldn't have to be. Your experience is that spending extra time for simpler design does more for software quality than spending time writing tests. I think that there's something to that. Um, the fact that I spend more time thinking about the ways that I can promote as much of my business logic as possible into a type system. Uh, I think that that does have a tendency to, play, to pay dividends when I'm hoping to write something that's robust and maintainable. Um, but at the same time, testing both unit and integration and functional, that's right, both, all three of those things, both of them, um, I think that it's meaningful. I think that it's a good practice to be in. But I don't think that it's the type of content that's going to make for a, a great programming history. That's right, both three. That's what I said. Look, I'm a programmer. Fence post errors come naturally to me. Anyway, we have ADC working. It's complete. All of the different addressing modes for ADC are working. Modulo the fact that I didn't um, I didn't implement any of the the BC uh, the the BCD stuff, and we're pretending that the decimal flag doesn't exist. Which you know what? Given that my my ultimate plan was something like this, is to make uh, a real bare bones NES simulator. I don't care. I'm okay with it. Who used the decimal flag anyway? I'm certain that somebody did. I'm extremely certain that, that somewhere there is software that, that I will fall flat on my face trying to run. Oh yeah, for sure. And I, I agree with Melius here as well. Like, there are very few cases where just tests are a bad idea. At minimum, you're going to get some value out of testing. But I am going to be right back. I am going to go refill my water, stretch my legs. We've been going for almost two hours, so now's a great time. Uh, stand up, stretch your legs, get some water, and we'll be back in like five minutes.
Hi, friends. Are all of your emotes La Milana? Not a complaint. That's right, that's me. Instantiated, as if from nowhere. If you were wondering what happens when you allocate something on the heap, it's exactly like that. You only have the one slot, but you have two different Molebrook emotes, unless you've gotten rid of the other Molebrook. Let's see. We have our add with carry. Next up, let's do and. I'm just going to go ahead and like this. We got immediate zero page, zero page X, absolute, absolute X, absolute Y. Did I do absolute Y? I did. All right, here's what's going to happen. We're just, we're, we're. Copy and pasting so I can avoid writing a few comments. It's great. All right. No, I will end up writing more code. Probably. This is fine. And we can, we can define all these and then we can just write the um, and function once. So immediate two cycles. So one of the cool things here is that the pattern in all of these uh, instructions is going to start becoming evident. That's going to be good. Time is going to be two, three, four, four. Two, three, four, four, four plus. Great. So Y is plus. Great. This offset is six, and Y offset is going to be five. Three, nine. This is going to be. Okay. 
And now we can just... With our boilerplate for and. Only going to set zero and let's get negative, negative. Rid of set register A. Oh no, there we go. Negative we set. Zero we set. Nothing else. There we go. All right. And went much much quicker than uh, ADC did. I'm not sure if your handle is with an L or with an I, uh, either Iopta or Lopta. Uh, yes, this is uh, a 6502 emulator. But yes, so ADC is add with carry, and is and Lopta. Fair enough. One of the best things about uh, attempting somebody's name twice is that. Uh, A and C. One of the best things about uh, attempting somebody's name twice is that you're guaranteed to get it wrong at least once. Let's use folds. And move on. Stop. Left shift. Interesting. Okay. I'm going to want to look up the manual for this instruction. Because ASL, the accumulator, is one thing. Then we have memory addressing. Okay, no, it can just operate on memory. Cool. All right, that's easy enough. Yeah, arithmetic shift line. So, okay, so A is two cycles. R N.
This is a fun album, but let's hop on to our next Giant Circles album. No, 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 no. This one. Shifting up one, not eight. Nope. The rest of this is all going to be memory mode. it worth let's write this one out and then we'll see if it's worth um we'll see if it's worth it's not gonna be immediate though it's gonna be zero page yeah, we'll, we'll write this out then when we're writing out x offset it'll become clear whether or not it's worth changing the definitions to use a uh, whether we can extract the logic. Bunch of chat. Wait, you can't hear the music? I, I definitely show levels. If I need to bump the, the levels up a little bit, I can definitely do that. You can hear the music, but it's quiet. That's that is what I'm going for. Yeah, um, the code that I wrote to pull the, uh, the album cover has broken, and I need to rewrite it. Um, a couple of other uh, things have broken recently, and, well, I will, I will be uh, fixing those, but right now, I'm not. Honestly, I... Uh, I need to just write a new client for um, MPD that I can use to just pull stuff live. Then I can stop leaning on. Uh, currently, what I'm playing stuff through is uh, a program called Cantata, but or not Cantata. Uh, presently, I'm using Clementine. I prefer to use Cantata, um, which is just an MPD client. But yes, uh, all the music that I'm listening to for people who can't hear it, sorry about that. Um, all the music that's playing is Big Giant Circles, because Big Giant Circles is fucking rad. What were we doing? Zero page. Arithmetic shift left. All 
All right, so we're getting a byte from the zero page. This is probably going to be worth moving to a um, moving to a, a external method. Zero page. It's life cycle. case where nope okay so this is always going to be yeah, this will be um, identical to logic All right, so we have zero page, zero page with X offset. Sixteen absolute and the OE. with X offset you are one thing and you cost just a flat seven this looks like a fancy IDE this is just them necessary. Oh, 
Oh, what's next? Bit. Actually, hey, I didn't touch the flag um, map or the flag logic in um, ASO. Setting, setting uh, carry, but we also need to be setting negative. I don't know how I managed to typo that word in that way. Yo, Shepik, how's it going? You're extremely interested to know whether this uh, stream will eventually implement the NES PPU or some other video device? Uh, my expectation is that we will eventually write an NES emulator. Not necessarily a performant one, not necessarily even one that's um, worth using at all. But I'd like to have gone from zero to having written an as, uh, NES emulator on stream. I think that sounds fun. We need to set some flat. Setting carry, great. Setting negative. Yep. Already masked results, so we don't need to do that. We can use that to put that extra masking. Now ASL is properly implemented, and we can move to testing bits. Oh, yeah, actually, that's fine. That's exactly where I wanted to go. I made it so that Vim would yell at me accidentally exactly where I wanted to go. Now my chat is talking about audio development. That sounds real rough, real scary. Why would you do that? we have just zero page and absolute Page is 24, absolute is 20C. Tonic is just a bit dollar sign hex, nice. Length for that is 2, that's correct. Yes. 
you enjoy writing SIMD code in a perverse kind of way? I mean, I think that writing SIMD code is real fun. So it sets the zero flag as though the value in the address tested is ended with the accumulator. The S and Z flags S and V flags. It tells me right here that it's supposed to affect flags in V and C. So I'm going to guess that, that it actually meant in and V flags. We're set to match bits 7 and 6 respectively in the value stored at the address. Oh wow, so there's like very little logic here. 327. I'm not like super... No, there's no S flag. Okay. We are on bit. Not gonna need to do that there because this is actually so bit. We're getting a zero page um, value. register with the accumulator, I think it said. Yep. Flag. In. set to setting overflow to, to just bit six is really weird to me but oh makes my life easy you should be four Sort of wish you hadn't given away your 6502 book now. I mean, I'm just going off of, um, and I'll link it in chat again. I linked it at the very start of the stream. Uh, I've got two bits of information I'm going off of. Uh, 6502.org has some wonderful information. I've got their opcode list up. And also from uh, 6502, I have a data sheet for the Rockwell uh, 65C00 family of, of uh, processors because anything that exists in the 6502 that is implemented in the 65C00 family is going to be 6502 compatible. You use Obelisk a bunch for referencing opcodes, yo, by Graytech. Speaking of people who are just absolute gods of 6502. My understanding is that 65CO2 is a superset of 6502.
Everyone, if you enjoy NES stuff, and especially people who are still, to this day, writing software for the NES, you 1 million percent need to be following by Grey Tech. Yeah, the Z80 is fantastic. It's a great chip. There's a reason that it still keeps on showing up and stuff today. ARM is kind of eating into that nowadays, but... What's next on the plate? Ranch instructions. Okay, cool. I know that I've definitely implemented branch instructions already. It's me. ECC, I think that's one of them. Branch and, branch and carry clear. All right. This is where things are going to become a little bit probably less super clean and straightforward. Should like... It's also before I lose that in my my clipboard. Just to make those stand out a little bit better. This is going to be pretty tough. Um, uh, specifically, uh, these, these instructions are not going to be too terribly uh, much to define. Uh, this is going to be tough to generalize in a way that lets me extract any of the business logic. that we're going to get in this list are BPL. 610. Flag in is zero, yes. Oh, this might actually be extremely, um, yeah, if the only thing that changes is my predicate, this might be very, very um, uh, extractable. And yeah, it looks like it looks like we might actually be able to extract all of this. Let's go ahead and do it.
there we go. That predicate is our... That's going to be a bunk that we pass in. Stopped just being register math a while ago. This is just straight up business logic now. It's not. It's not an operand. It's going to be a punk that we're getting. I think that's all that we need to do, although this is not in the correct position. Belong here. Yeah, that, that should actually just be it. At least we're both BPM. I can just drop you. Okay. All right, so BPL is branch on plus. That's hex 10. Uh, and nope, I'm already explicitly expecting to catch a thunk. The flag. Plus would be for flag in, zero. And then next up will be branch on minus BMI. It's 30. It'll be overflow. Overflow, clear, and set. Let's see. is carry clear. Okay. I'm actually surprised. I thought that I wrote a, a comment defining that. 70. Yep, B O D O F O. Yep. It's yes. Then not equal and equal. I assume is just a simple test on the zero flag, I think. I assume.
BBC instruction will take three cycles no matter what address. Interesting. Go ahead and set that. Let's override whatever was set inside. Hey, Vigratech, if you're still here. Uh, is the branch on not equal and branch on equal just testing the zero flag? Ruffles up, how's it going? Sixty five oh two is fun, that's how we got Furbies. Hell yeah. Yeah, Lopta. Um, I, I've i mentioned it previous, actually, in this stream, but yeah, I really like... Um, I love the fact that all instructions in ARM are of equal length. That makes it much easier to look at code and go, well, clearly my, my alignment fucked up. Oh, wait, here is exactly where it fucked up. Ah, yes, it is exactly what it's doing. I assume so. I appreciate the confirmation of my assumption there. actually quite interesting. This is the only one where we're testing for non-zero before we test for zero. Branches are done, though. Uh, and having defined branches, that's another... That's another instruction that we can test straight up with the um, program. Actually, do definitely break. So, hit F, break. You're looking for E0, which is at 81, 6. CA. Okay, decrement X. All right, so 81.6, we're at EO, which is our branch instruction. And this is branch if carry clear, I think. Actually, wait, EO. Not sure what EO is. Let's just compare X. Aha! That is probably FO, it's branch of carry clear. Next instruction. There we go. So carry is not clear. I can tell you exactly what the problem is.
Actually, maybe not. Or yeah, we were branching on equal, not carry clear. Regardless. I'm coming to jump yet. No, we haven't. Well, I have become confused again. Tell me where we break. Carry is clear. 18. if equal is two. So we should be branching. Wait. That's actually... Okay, no, we didn't branch. Perfect. So we cleared carry. D. We did branch. Oh. Do I have a test suite to run against my emulator? No, we've been uh, we've been doing this one by the seat of our pants. Um, so far, it hasn't been a problem. We might be needing to change that up pretty soon. Given that I don't have anything with absolute addressing, I don't think that that's going to be a problem just yet. I think that my branch if equal is... Let's look at compare x. So EO. So we're looking for 16. Here we go. We're comparing x to 0. It's not equal. Here we get set. Let's take a look here. Oh, wow. Did I just remember? I might have just remembered the way that CPX works uh, backwards. That's as if a subtraction had been carried out. The value of the accumulator is equal or greater than. Every bit would be set. The Z and negative flags would be set based on the following lack thereof and of a sign. Welcome in. Hickey, how's it going? It's CPX, CPY, compare, all have the greater than or equal to and less than rules for the carry plan. Check that. Okay, compare the flag as if, as if a subtraction has been, um, or it sets flags as if a subtraction has been carried out. The value in the accumulator is equal or greater than the compared value 
Harry will be sent. Yep. The equal, which is also the zero flag, is set based on equality or lack thereof. Hey Vi, am I getting this wrong? I, in my head, for some reason, Z was always unset when things were were not equal. But maybe I've just got it backwards. I think that I've just got it backwards. Z is if equal. Okay. And then negative is real easy. All right, cool, 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 cool. That's just, my branch logic is wrong. Which is the least painful of all possible problems. still Get to that fun. Let's see what's going on. Oh, this time we got to one E. We never even hit the branch. Oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Looking for eighteen. Let's do this by hand. So we are set correctly. Interestingly, uh, I was potentially overriding it, although all stretches, like, that doesn't appear to have been impacting things. So by hand it is. I needed to know.
not gonna do it. Hmm. much easier than I'm making it. I don't need to have the predicate inside this method. Easy. Just move the predicate outside of the method. How's it going? So Z is set if zero for CPX. That seems weird. That seems like equality, but would be really hard to assert. Glad to hear that you're doing well. All right. They miss yelling at me. I tried to branch to three. F O O three. Ah. Uh... F O isn't a uh, shown. to 19, which definitely is wrong. Walk through this one more time. Come up to A. B is set in memory. ADF. is A90O. 
Put zero to A. 13. Add for carry. It's 80. There we go. Deck run X. 16. One, two, four, six. E zero, zero, zero. Which is compare X to zero. Not equal. Zero is not set. Area is set. That's fine. Next up, branch if equal to two. Uh, plus two from, from where we are. That's why. Okay, cool. So, form branch actually does need, like, we always need to consume that offset. We're no longer calling a bad instruction. That's progress. Fifteen. Yeah, yo. CA decks. Yo. Comparing X to nothing. They're not equal, zero is not set. Branching, if they're equal, plus two. Didn't follow it. Eighteen ninety. Eighteen clear carry. Yep. Ninety F six. Jump minus four. Set. Branch on carry clear. Oh yeah. Because we cleared carry. Alright, so now we should jump. Four instructions back. You ever just feel real dumb? Plus, negative is zero, correct. Minus, negative is non-zero, correct. Overflow clear, zero. Overflow set, non-zero. Carry clear, zero. Carry set, non-zero. Equal, 
is. Not equal, zero, equal, zero. Okay. Hey, we actually run now. How nice. Zia said it. Zero is in relation to the subtraction. Oh, okay, I gotcha. Lopta, you've returned. Welcome back. Yeah, I think it's fair to call us C64, 6502 compatible. By Gray Tech, that's that's the um, that's a principle that I work on as well. I'm gonna be wrong a lot, but that's okay as long as I'm wrong often enough that occasionally I accidentally end up uh, correct. Branch instructions done. Break done. Easy. Easiest instruction to implement. I don't even have to type. The fact that break takes seven instructions is wild. Like, I get it. I understand why. But it's just one of those things where, like, conceptually, you want to think about break as being ridiculously fast. Would it not be the easiest? Yeah. Compare registers, or compare the accumulator to the memory. Okay. You have any CMP yet? Nope. Sure don't. to set flags. Oh, yeah. Okay, where's that? CPX. In fact, probably... Hopefully all of this can be... abstracted out. Be register A instead of register X. Yeah.
A, B. B will be our register. Let's call it register. Value. I think that that's going to make it so that we can do CPX real easily as well. Not actually doing a CMP instruction there. Now, let's do that. And this is going to be easy. The worst part of this is going to be typing in just all the mnemonics and the, um, the opcodes. Immediate, you're going to the page. For zero page, I did. Android and iOS each implement different variations of the ARM calling convention, meaning you can't write a JIT for ARM unless you know which device you're JITting for. I mean, that's not entirely surprising. Oh yeah, that's also why decompilers for ARM seem to universally stink. I totally, I, I absolutely would believe that. Um, I'd be a little bit surprised if Ghidra or uh, Radare weren't pretty good, though. Just as community projects, they seem to be pretty rad. Zero page, X offset, you are D5. So now a lot of that. Um, A lot of that kind of early uh, like foundational work that we put in starting to pay dividends. Wait. Absolute length is three.
Ah, we can't do that here. No, it's offset. Why offset? Also going to be four plus. Absolute is actually four. Your page X offset is DDD. Y is going to be D nine. never costing an extra it is great it is cd1 Always cost six cycles. And then indirect Y is D to one. ahead and do CPX and CPY as well. Those are going to be super easy. The X only has immediate zero and absolute. CPX is EO. You cost two. Your page is going to be CPY is going to be trivial to implement. Maybe C 
uh, let's see for CC. Actually, I just realized I didn't, um... I didn't remove the other CPX instruction. But the good news is that we continue to work anyway. Brilliant. Decrement memory. We have Nope. We don't have any prior art here. Not a big deal. I believe and memory is probably our best bet for stealing some of our code. Go ahead and implement a deck real quick. think that it was and. Where were we writing to? ASL. So it was ASL. It's going to give us what we need. Well, I implement undocumented opcodes. Um, to start, I'm just going off of the official list, uh, but yes, I will be implementing the undocumented, the illegal opcodes. That's right, opcodes that can only be used for crime. read, decrementing one, we'll set negative and zero. Set of course we wouldn't set carry. Negative zero. This looks correct.
cycles. E6 is X offset. Cool. E6. Read the wrong number of cycles here, though. Five. You're going to take six. Absolute. And then it'll be X offset. CE Believe that absolute with X offset is one set takes. Yep. DE. You can definitely tell that I eventually um, had something of a style shift there. Ah, I did implement uh, decrement X, just not decrement memory. That's that's the difference. Okay. recently forced yourself to learn C and haven't touched it since. I absolutely adore C and I hope to never ever write it again. Um, C is an excellent language to know. C is a horrifying language to write or maintain software in knowing that any human being ever will use it. You know, I had assumed that the page that I'm going off of was in alphabetical order, because up to this point, it was. Um, but then I just looked down and I realized, yeah, I, I never re-implemented the clear carry instruction. Because it's listed, actually, I two more instructions than I would have gotten to it under flag instructions. First, I have to implement... OK, 
okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna soapbox for like two seconds here. I hate this mnemonic. This is the worst mnemonic, and it's because it's I, I learned, you know. It's because I learned other mnemonics for this instruction first. But just I don't like it. That's right, Eeyore, Winnie the Pooh's friend. Who, be fair, is very contrarian. So, I mean, there's that, but... I love the fact that the 6502 opcodes list doesn't tell me what I'm exclusive oring. I'm going to go out on a limb and I'm going to assume the accumulator register because just about everything seems to have the accumulator register as an implicit um, operand, but... You set negative and zero, so I'll keep that, I guess. this up because I'm gonna just steal Page is forty five. Let me do this real quick.
tried to add color space correction to an emulator recently. Interesting. That sounds... That sounds hard. I don't know anything about color math. Um, honest to God, the, the most scary part of this project is knowing that at some point I am going to have to learn about graphical programming, which I have successfully managed to avoid for the last 29 years of my life. Because, hmm, not, not looking, not looking forward to that. Zero page, 45, three cycles, great. Zero page X, 55. Once again, these patterns are going to start emerging in the, uh, the opcodes. And that's all because of just the way that the CPU was designed at the, the circuit level. Like, each bit in one of these opcodes is going to represent a line that's being pulled high or being kept low at the time that the, uh, the CPU is, is uh, triggered. So, 55. Four cycles. Oh. Still four plus, great. See, this is gonna be five nine, and yep, it's five nine. One, yep. Exclusive or done. So. It is pretty late, almost five. Um, let's do flag statuses. And then I think next Tech Tuesday will be the last stream where we're implementing these opcodes. Um, these are pretty easy to do, especially since all all of these are just in implied mode. Fair carry. It's eighteen. How many do I have? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six to set. That is set, carry. Stop. Clear. Interrupt. I just realized. Five eight. Here we are.
clear. Well. Definitely getting used in an NES emulator, this one. Terrible at counting? I must be just terrible at counting. One, three, five, seven, nine, B. No. Oh, you were you were just bad. Bad at counting, I guess. Cool. Oh. Yeah, there there would have had to be seven. That is uh, real good, um, real good indicator that it's definitely getting to the point where probably going to be making the obvious mistakes. My ability to count is compromised. Luckily, everything still continues to work. So today, mostly a foundational kind of doing the 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 dirty work day. We started abstracting out as much of our um, our common business logic as we can, just into methods that can be called um, individually, so that we can reduce uh, any sort of um, the, just code duplication. Uh, make everything just a little bit more uh, a little bit more maintainable, a little bit easier to reason about which is quite nice. And we've got a bunch more uh, stuff implemented. At this point, I'm pretty sure next, next Tech Tuesday is gonna be the end of implementing these instructions. I don't like doing any work on Tech Tuesday content before I'm live, but I'm gonna hunt around for just any sort of program that we can use to, uh, to comprehensively uh, test out all of the instructions that are implemented. And that way, um, once we have everything implemented, we can start just, at this point, it's going to act as a unit test. Um, we can test all of the stuff that we've done. How many instructions are left? Um, well, it's going to be easier to count how many instruction classes are left, I think. Let's see. Instruction classes less than half. So, and that's... Looking at looking at the the scroll bar when I jump to where we're at flag processor status instructions, 
uh, we are we're past the halfway point and there is still stuff that uh, we haven't um, overwritten yet so I think that we are pretty darn close to being done here's here's a, the point where we get into stuff that I implemented last stream not much left of that but there's not that much left of the opcode list either, so. Yeah, hooking IO, running a test program. Uh, binder news. I, I, def I, I have a few people who work in InfoSec who hang out in my chat. Um, plenty of extremely knowledgeable people hang out here. I am absolutely lucky and like I hate it's become kind of a cliche to say that you're blessed but I'm I'm really blessed to have just one of the best communities on Twitch that's also a cliche but I honest to god mean it but yeah so far this has been fun um and that's it, it feels like that's a, a decent amount of stuff to have gotten done across three streams where We've averaged, I don't know, probably three hours per stream. This one feels like it's been a much longer one than most of the Tech Tuesdays. About to retake Calc 1. Best of luck with that. Um, advanced mathematics is one of those things that I have a deep love for and way, way too little knowledge about. Do I intend on emulating some equipment with a 6502? Yeah, my thought is that this is going to turn into... So, the the first uh, of the three streams that... Um, that we, uh, we did here. Just as a, a recap for anybody who's new. Perfect. In fact, really what we want now, because we've moved it, is to CPU DSO. Uh, the, the big thing that we've really made here, um, that was the first stream, was we built a DSL not for the specific uh, CPU, the 6502, uh, but for a more generalized idea of uh, a DSL to define emulators. And so now, implementing the 6502, um, that seemed like a non-trivial but easy enough CPU to implement. Um, especially as somebody like, I don't know any of the 6502 internals. Uh, I'm sorry, DSL, meaning uh, domain-specific language. That's, that's a term that you're going to hear a ton if you hang around people who think that languages like Lisp are good. But yeah, so then the previous stream um, last week and then today's stream have been a lot of uh, implementing the 6502 and finding ways that we can use um, the act of implementing the DSL or implementing the CPU through the DSL uh, to, to give some inspiration for ways that we might further refine the DSL and make it so that it ends up being more useful, um, giving more value just by existing. And um, also, as a, a reminder, um, all of this stuff is going to be going up on my GitHub once we have stuff kind of solidified. Um, I am keeping a, uh, where we're keeping uh, each of the streams states uh, tagged. So there's not gonna be any, you know, what came when. And then I'm also working on um, taking all the content from here and kind of distilling it down, not so much for people who are hanging out here, but for people who can't make the streams, because let's be real, it's kind of fun to hang out in a code stream for three, four hours. Uh, it's a lot less fun when you're not in a chat. So even though I'm uploading these streams to YouTube, um, I want to also make some 
more condensed content. So that's going to be happening um, as well. But yeah, so far, feels like uh, we're making some pretty good progress. Looking forward to, uh, to the next one.